you may have heard that CCS is going to implement a BYOD program next year. BYOD stands for Bring Your Own Device. So I'd like to take a few minutes and explain a little bit more about this program. This will begin in this coming August, and what it means for us is that all juniors and seniors are going to take part in it. Uh, freshmen and sophomores may bring devices if they wish, but we're expecting all juniors and seniors to do so. Classes will be designed to use those. And you'll be using your electronic devices for instructional work at school. Notice the words instructional work. That's the purpose, not games, but for you to use them for learning. Here's some examples of types of things you might be doing. Now, your teachers will uh, have control and they'll decide what you do with them, but these are the types of things you might do. For example, you might use a video presentation for a book report. Uh, you might use them to look up terms when needed. Maybe you're reading in your literature book and you come across a word you don't understand. You can look it right up. Uh, on your device, instead of having to go down to the tech lab or do something else with it, you can look it up right at the time. Your class might have a live video chat with experts in the field, maybe in science class. You might talk with somebody who's an expert in the field, and you can have a video chat with them. In history, maybe you're studying battlefields and studying battles of the war between the states, but you could use Google Earth to get a picture of what the battlefield and the terrain of the land You'll be able to use your device to work on documents from anywhere, whether you're at school, at home, or anywhere that you have an internet device. And so I'm sure that you've been excited about the fact, or, or bit you've been disappointed actually, that you have not been able to do work when you were on vacation at the beach. Well, you no longer have an excuse for that. You can work anytime, anywhere. Maybe you have ebooks. Now, there are a lot, not a lot of textbooks that are online yet. But uh, there are literature books, there are things that you can read, so you can use them, your devices, to read. Now here are the main requirements for your device. We allow you to bring a lot of different things as we'll be going over, but whatever you bring, you have to be able to do these things. You need to be able to access the internet through Wi-Fi. If you can't access the internet, then you cannot use your device. You need to be able to use your device to create word process documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. Okay, those are the main three things that you'll need to do. You need to be able to use it to access Microsoft 365, and we'll be explaining more about that when school begins, but we'll be using that for our email, for cloud storage, for Office, Microsoft Office. So. Um, you need to be able to access that. You also will need to be able to access email and Edmodo. We'll explain more about that when the school year begins. You'll use your device to take notes. Uh, we'll talk about several note-taking applications that you can use, but you'll do that. It's highly preferable if your device can do recording of video, audio, or still pictures. Uh, it's not required, but it will be really helpful for you. Overall, your device needs to be able to create content, not just view content. That is, it's more than just reading a book or viewing a web page. You need to be able to use your device to create content like we've explained here. Now let's look at some examples of devices. One might be Windows laptops, netbooks, or tablets. A lot of different things here. Maybe you prefer Mac. So you can have various kinds of Mac laptops. Or you have an iOS device. If it's an iPad or an iPod Touch, an iPad Mini or an iPhone, any of those would work as well. Maybe you prefer Android. If you've got an Android smartphone or an Android tablet, you can use those. Or maybe you like Google Chromebooks. Uh, they're inexpensive. You could get a Google Chromebook and you can do everything that we need for you to do. So these are just some examples of things, but these can all do the types of work that you'll need to do. So you can see there's a wide variety of things here. Now there's several things that are not acceptable. 
One is the Kindle and Kindle Fire, or the Nook and the Nook HD. These are useful only for reading ebooks. I know you can browse the web on them, but you can't really do any of the work that we're talking about. Now, if you already have books on these and you use them to read books, that's fine. You can bring them for that, but you're still going to need something else to be able to do all the other work that we need for you to do. You also cannot bring a Nintendo DS. It can access the web, but it's primarily a gaming device, so don't even bring the Nintendo DS. Now, for those of you who are in the STEM program, uh, you're required to have a laptop computer for your STEM program, and those laptops will work with all of this, so you don't need to get something different than what you already have for the STEM program. Now, remember your device has to access Wi-Fi. You have to connect to our school Wi-Fi network. I know that you've we've had problems with uh, slow network and with having trouble connecting to it. We're doing a major upgrade this summer, so that should be taken care of. But our network is being upgraded, but whatever, you are not allowed to use your data plan on your device. If you have 3G or 4G, if you have a cellular data plan, you are not allowed to use that. Uh, that's a disciplinable offense if we need to go there. Uh, for one thing, it's not filtered, but for another thing, it's going to eat up the money that your parents spend on that data plan. So uh, you must use Wi-Fi when you're here. So when will you be allowed to use your device? Well, basically in class when the teacher allows it. Remember, this is the key here, that the teacher is the one who is in charge. Okay, When the teacher allows it. Uh, they may ask that you turn your devices off, they can ask you to put them on your desk, they can ask you to put them away, and you're not allowed to say, oh, well, the school says I can use them. No, it's under the control of the teacher. They tell you when you can use your device. Where are you allowed to use it? Well, basically in instructional settings, classrooms, that type of thing, and with permission of the faculty or staff member. Particularly, you may not use your device in bathrooms or locker rooms. There are a lot of reasons for this, but that, again, is a disciplinable offense. Don't go there with it, okay? Don't go in the locker room and say that you're doing your studying, okay? You're not, that's not legitimate. What about using your device for communication? Okay, these are the types of things that you all do, whether you're under the desk or whether you're doing it openly, whether you're texting or using them as phones. Uh, the main thing here is no, 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 no. You are not allowed to use your devices in this way. You may not use them to make phone calls. You may not use them to send text messages. Basically, there's no contact with anyone with your device during the school day without permission from the faculty or administration. Not even your parents. If you need to call your parents for something, like you're not feeling well and you need them to pick you up, or you left your project at home, use the school phone. This is no different than what we've always had. Okay, so don't use your phone uh, unless a teacher specifically asks you to. There may be a time when they may say, yes, I want you to do this, but in general, it's not allowed. Here's what you might think of our tech support. Okay, um, Basically, the idea here is we don't provide tech support. You need to know how to use your device before you bring it to school. Don't go out and get a new iPad the day before school begins and pull it out of the box on the way to school and then you get here and you say, how do I turn it on? How do I charge it? How do I add apps? How do I do this? You need to learn how to do that on your own. Now we will give you instructions on connecting your device to our network. The first day of school we're going to have a rather extensive orientation and we will tell you how to do that. But otherwise we won't be providing other tech support. You need to figure out the technical issues on your own or ask your friends. What about security? You need to take care of your devices. We're not responsible for lost, stolen, or damaged devices. These belong to you. You need to take care of them, so you need to guard them. 
I know with some devices, the uh, Apple iPad, iPod Touch, uh, when you get those, you can have your name engraved on them. That's a suggestion, or have your name marked on them in some way, so that if you happen to misplace it, we can get it back to you. But that's a suggestion, but you're responsible for the security of your devices. So now, if you have any questions uh, throughout the summer, please feel free to email me, and I hope this will be helpful for you, and I look forward to our BYOD program beginning in the fall.